Hello, my buds. Welcome to the first bonus episode here on One More Round. I'm Trisha Black, your host of the show. And I thought, you know, what the heck, I kind of want to do bonus episodes here and there where I just kind of chat about things that I've been up to or TV shows that I think people should check out or music that I think people should check out. So I thought, you know, what better day to do that than Monday, you know, start the week off right. Get us moving, have something to look forward to for the week or something to do this weekend coming up. There was such a huge storm on Friday night. It was the second one this past week uh, that I truly thought it was there was going to be a tornado in Toronto, which I don't think is fully possible. I think we get tornadoes sometimes up north in Ontario, but I truly thought that we it was I was going to be in the movie Twister, you know, the movie Twister with... Helen Hunt and R.I.P. Bill Paxton. He was such a wonderful actor. Uh, I'd love that movie. I watch that movie probably once every couple of months. It's on Prime. I think it's on Crave or Stars TV. Uh, and I just, I just put it on, and it feels good. I won't watch the beginning of that movie though. The beginning of that movie is uh, uh, terrifying. It terrified me as a child, and I refused to watch it. I fast forward every time, because it's you know it's it's little Helen Hunt's character, and she's got her little dog that looks like Toto from uh, The Wizard of Oz, and all of a sudden you see on the news that there's a tornado coming through, and the, the mom's like, "Come on, we gotta go," and the dad's like, "Let's get down into the thing," and for some reason he has to hold the door closed, shut in their like basement. And then the twister is coming, and it's coming, it's coming, and everybody's screaming, and then the dad gets ripped into the sky. Well, they're perfectly fine. Um, I, I, that may be a flaw in the movie, because he got, he got pulled. Like, I mean, they, he, he was holding onto the door, but you'd think that they would all be sucked out at that point. But I guess not. I mean... Who's to say? And then the movie really kicks off and you get to meet Bill Paxton and, and Helen Hunt and they have this like really intense relationship. Anyway, if you're looking for a good film to watch, I, I truly suggest Twister. It is it is good. Um, I, there are scenes, there's this brilliant scene. Uh, they're watching The Shining on a drive-in movie theater and this big tornado rips through it. And then there's another scene where they, because they were, so to explain who Bill Paxton and, and Helen Hunt were, uh, they were um, married at one point. They're tornado chasers uh, and they're married but then they get divorced because he wants to become a a weatherman and he gets mocked pretty hard also this movie had Seymour, philip seymour hoffman in a role that i don't think we've ever seen him in before this like frumpy like like <laughs> weed smoking kind of dude but he's really super chill and cool uh anyway so they're trying to sign divorce papers but then bill paxton gets like swept up in this romance with Helen Hunt again and then uh there's a scene that I love and they're chasing and he's like we can't do it Joe we can't and, and then they get in this fight and she's like you've never seen it miss this house and miss that house and come after you and he goes is that what you think Joe why don't you stop living in the past and look at what's right in front of you Joe me Joe <laughs> And meanwhile, his current fiance is hearing all of that on the radio and all of the people in their crew are like, ooh. But it is a great movie. It is a phenomenal, solid flick. And I, I think everyone should check it out on a rainy day because it is very fun. Uh, so we didn't go on our usual hike like we do because it was so stormy this week here in Toronto. I'm in a camping phase. I want to go camping. I want to be in nature. I love it. I love it so much much and I think I'm just maybe I'm just really leaning into being a queer woman and just wanting to slap on some plaid and start a fire and chop wood and just be one with the earth uh <laughs> I don't know if that's what it is but I am I am or if it's this pandemic and I've been stuck in a city that is has the highest number of cases and I go I'll be safer in the woods absolutely I would for sure. I got nothing to worry about out there except for maybe some wildlife and ticks. 
So we didn't go. Uh, we didn't go for a hike. Uh, we kind of like sat around and enjoyed uh, the rain and kind of just relaxed and sat on the couch and watched TV all weekend, which honestly is also the best. Uh, just being able to sit and not do anything. I didn't have really anything to do this weekend, which was really nice. I was caught up on a lot of my work, so it was just nice to relax. And, you know, also during this quarantine time, I've been watching a lot of TV, probably more TV than I have in the last few years because my schedule has not allowed it until now because I don't have a job and who knows when it'll be back. Hey, <laughs> uh, so we watched a lot of TV. What, what's everyone watching these days? Or, or is everyone watching mostly like some of the new Netflix shows? I really want to watch The Old Guard. Apparently, I've been reading it's supposed to be pretty good there on Netflix. And this is what I've really gotten into. And we're about to go on a bit of a deep dive. So get ready. Um, I've been watching what some people like to call trash TV. Uh, but to me, it's not trash because I think it is so, so good. Uh, but a lot of people call it trash TV, a reality TV show that has me so invested. I have gone back and started from the very beginning, which, you know, quarantine has been on for too long. When you go back to watch an entire reality TV show from the beginning, I think my brain may be melting. But I need to know the drama that capsizes this cast on the high seas from every season and every iteration. So pull the deck lines in. Let's turn down because your bosun and Chief Stew is on deck and ready for duty because let's talk below deck. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I never thought I would love a reality TV show so much. This show is wild. For people who don't know what Below Deck is, let me fill you in on this little sweet treat of a show. Basically, it follows uh, a cast of crew members who work on mega yachts. Uh, there's a captain, there's your deck crew who is headed by your lead deckhand or your bosun, uh, which basically just means they're in charge of dropping anchor and pulling in lines and putting out all of the toys that these millionaires get to play with, which we'll get to in a minute. Uh, and then also <laughs> there's the interior, which are like, which you have your chief stew and then your stewardesses, and they basically take care of service and, uh, you know, basically kind of like a really expensive maid, uh, but also I don't like to call them a maid because they do everything on that boat. And then you have the one who works in the galley. They're their own team, the chef. Uh, so that's kind of your team of characters. And then there's a few people like behind the scenes that we meet in the first episode each season. And then we see once in a while, I think there's like a chief engineer and a first officer who are obviously there in case things go wrong in, in the <laughs> electronic area of the boat and obviously there's a and I think I said captain um and below deck I had seen a little bit of below deck and a little bit of below deck med which we will get into later on but I love this show so these are people who work on mega yachts so basically billionaires uh pay a shit ton of money to come on this boat for two or three days and basically be fully catered to like I'm talking there was an episode with a 12 course meal they get whatever drinks they want they get toys that go in the water like ski doos and a slide and a, a pool to protect them from you know jellyfish and they get anything they want and they have an insane crazy time and some of the guests are amazing and some of the guests are awful and the same with the crew some of the crew is amazing and some of it is some of them are awful uh and i am on season four right now i'm on season four so i've gone through almost four seasons of this show and every episode i want to watch and see what happens to the next one uh because it is truly wild because there's so much drama there's so much drama. They're on these boats for six weeks. So six weeks of the year. That's not a long time. And they can make upwards to ten, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000 just in tips. So they work hard. They work, they work their asses off for tips. Um, and so they can make so much money. But the drama, it's like everybody wants to fuck each other. and And people hate each other. And there's... 
there's fighting constantly. I mean, obviously, you're on a tiny, tiny boat. You live in tiny quarters. You sleep with each other. It's like being in university again, except you're working for all of this money and you're put under all of this amount amount of pressure. But some people are so good at it, at what they call uh, at, at yachting, and they call themselves yachties. Um, so <laughs> this is the show I've been watching, and it is truly exciting, and I love it so 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 much. Uh, uh, <laughs> my girlfriend introduced me to the show and I think it is absolutely amazing. Uh, and, uh, she was like, I love this show. And then I started watching it. And I was like, Oh, reality TV show. Here we go. And then I started watching it and I was like, Oh my God, this is truly the best. Jill. I'm going to get her in here. I'm going to yell. I'm going to be annoying for a second. Jill. Jill. Come here. How much do we love Below Deck? We really love Below Deck. Who's your favorite? Hmm. My favorite is Rocky. Wow. <laughs> I just finished season three, so Rocky is an interesting choice to me. But I love, I love that choice. I mean, she was wild. What what do you like the best about this show? I like that, unlike um, Real Housewives, it kind of makes fun of rich people. It's making them look ridiculous. It really does. It makes people look it, like these people who rent these yachts. Maggie, come in here. Maggie, my dog, just so everyone knows, also loves this show so much that she's barking. Uh, it makes the people who who rent these yachts look a bit... Um, wild. Like I don't know what other u word to use, but the, it makes them look not great in the best light. In Real Housewives, in Real Housewives it make them look bad. Like ridiculous. Oh, like ridiculous. Yeah, of course. All reality TV shows are ridiculous. <laughs> Thanks, Jill, for coming in here. As I screamed your name from the other room because I'm too lazy to get up. <laughs> you are welcome. I love you. <laughs> love you <laughs> that's our relationship i love her and maggie maggie what do you think about below deck that's what i thought no no answer <laughs> so like i said i'm on season four uh and things are crazy um season one was weird because it was the first season so the um quality of the show was really really not great um and the cast of characters were a little bit more realistic, I guess. Captain Lee was there. I love Captain Lee. I love that he calls people kiddo. I want Captain Lee. I want to work for Captain Lee. I don't want. I don't think I'd be a steward, a stew, but I think I'd be a good stew. I think I'd be a better deckhand, though. I'd like to be outside, you know, really, you know, you know, using the muscle or what muscle I have, which isn't a whole lot of muscle, but I'm trying to get more muscle. And I think if I was a deckhand, I would have lots of muscle. Uh, <laughs> and my favorite character, and I don't know, they're not characters, I call them characters, but they're real people, uh, <laughs> is Kate. Ah, uh, Chief Stew Kate. Kate is uh, amazing. I think she's great because she tells it like it is. She's there to work hard. She's there to make money. And yes, she may have a resting bitch face, but that's because she's concentrated on what she's doing. And yes, I think she can be a bit of a bully, but I think that's because she holds people to a really high standard and wants them to work their ass off so that they can make a shit ton of money. I also like Chef Ben. I love Chef Ben. Um, he's this guy and as someone who's worked in kitchens understands what pressure you're under when you're cooking these meals so when he's in the kitchen he gets a little bit like angry and like mad but then immediately apologizes and I feel like he's got like a sweet side I'm only season four again so maybe things change but right now I'm I'm loving chef Ben uh people that I really don't like um Jill loved Rocky. I didn't mind Rocky, mostly for the drama. Uh, but as somebody who was working on the show, like who I didn't think she worked very hard. I think she could have done better. I think she also got the short end of, of the, you know, I think she got like shit on quite a bit. Uh, but um, the person that I did not like the most was from season one, and she was the chief stew, and her name was um, 
I believe her name was Adrian. Uh, she was the worst. Uh, I did not like her. She was not 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 that she had to be charismatic, but I think you need to be have a bit of charisma to be a chief stew. Like I think you need like a little bit to charm the guests, and she didn't have that at all. She she was unorganized. She was like a bit strange. And like when the lesbians showed up, she was like all about the lesbians. So that in season two, and here's a spoiler alert, spoiler alert, <laughs> uh, season two, she shows back up uh, because that same lesbian rents a boat again from Captain Lee and invites Adrian on the boat to be served by her old stew. Oh, it's nasty. And she was she just wasn't great at her job, which is probably why Kate is now Chief Stew and has been apparently for the last um, five or six seasons. Um, she's awesome. And this season, especially what also I love about Below Deck is that there is a lot of queerness on the show. There was a queer a queer man, a gay man the first season uh he was a deckhand and he was so lovely and so good and he showed up again in season three um dave bradbury and then in season four which i'm on now and another spoiler alert this is a spoiler alert for you uh kate is dating a woman and it's great i've never seen her so happy in her life uh I I would love Kate to forever date women. I think she, I think she deserves it. She deserves love. She deserves somebody uh, to make her feel good. You know, she makes a lot of people feel good on the boat, so she deserves it too. Uh, <laughs> even though I've I have heard, I don't know if it worked out very well, but it's pretty fun to watch. They make out a lot on the for, on this season, and I I enjoy that. So I like that there's like queerness. Also in this season too, there's a guy on the boat who is bisexual and dates a lot of trans women. Um they don't speak about it maybe in the most proper way, but even still like everyone's very like supportive of it and and it makes me feel a little bit better that they have it in like such a good positive light on this show. It's like love who you love and there we are and it doesn't matter. Uh so that is really fun for me. I'm just really getting into it. I truly truly think this show is a blast. It is it is I I just don't understand. And another thing I don't understand about the show, and I'm getting heated about it because I'm so passionate about Blow Deck now, um, is that they're on there for six weeks and there's so much drama and so many people quit. And I'm like, you could have made tens, ten thousands, ten thousands of dollars <laughs> in six fucking weeks. That I make that I could I used to make that in half of a year. And you don't want to work your ass off for those six weeks and make all that money and put aside that you don't like somebody for drama. I get it. It's reality TV. So you're on camera all the time. Of course, you got to have the drama. Or there'd be no show. But also sometimes I'm like, oh, my gosh, get over it. You don't need to jump off. the. How dramatic are you? Take off all your clothes and jump in the water. Ugh. Season three, Rocky. Uh, spoiler alert! I should have warned you, but it is it is ridiculous. It's like we get it. You you work you you were a dive instructor. How many times does she freaking dive on that season? She dives so much, too much diving, <laughs> too much diving. <laughs> but I will say this: be prepared in these bonus episodes because I am going to be updating you on my below deck journey. And it is a journey so far. I'm going to continue watching all seasons of Below Deck. And then I'm going to move on to all the seasons of Below Deck Med. Because I've seen a little bit. I love Captain Sandy. Oh, Captain Sandy, a female queer captain. Give it to me. Yes, please. And then there's another show now called Below Deck Sailing Yacht. So it's not a mega yacht. But it is at the same time. It's just a bit smaller. And they sail. Uh, what? <laughs> This is amazing. I got Hey You just for that. Uh, so if you, if you want to hear more, keep checking in on these bonus episodes uh, that are coming up because I will let you know about some cool, 
cool things that are happening in pop culture from Below Deck to new music um, to comedy shows that you should check out and things that are just really getting me through uh, the week every week. And right now it is Below Deck and I love it and I adore it and you should watch it. Get Hey You, it's $6 a month. It's worth it. <laughs> It's worth it for Below Deck. Oh, also from the East Coast, so the ocean. They're always on the ocean. It's a lot of water. I really think I need to get a job on a mega yacht. I'm really rethinking my career choice right now. <laughs> uh, so if you want to keep up, you know, hit that subscribe button. Leave us a review. Uh, uh, give us a rating if you like. Uh, you can follow me at it's underscore Trisha Black on Instagram and Twitter. You can check out my website, it's trishablack.com. You can check out the pod's new Instagram account, One More Round Podcast. To follow up on what's happening on the pod. This Wednesday is my wonderful interview with the Paloma Nunez. We talk about growing up in Sudbury, Ontario, going to a Catholic school, skunks, and of course, at the top of our list, how the Raptors are still the NBA champions and how excited we are for the Blue Jays' new ensemble, is what we call it, the team, the new Blue Jays team. So if you want to listen to that, tune in on Wednesday. It was a hoot and a holler, and I had a blast, and I love Paloma, and you will as well. And now I'm going to leave you now with a little song from my first guest, Mr. Tom Hearn, uh, doing an original comedic song. We'll see you Wednesday for one more round with me, Trisha Black. Get Hey You. It's worth it. Below deck. I'll tell everyone to watch it. <laughs> Thanks for taking me to lunch, Bobby. Oh, this is who I was talking about. Hey, Paul, you're a homosexual, right? Wow, thanks for asking so loudly in the office. Yes. Oh, good. This is my friend Bobby. He's also a homosexual. Hey. I thought you might like him. <laughs> Why does this always happen to me? Sitting in my office, being gay as can be. When straight Brenda comes over to me, telling me to date her gay friend Bobby. lot of gay men so I don't want your gay friend I don't care if he's a designer or he finds that men are finer I don't care if he's got great stuff cause I've been dating men for a while let me see So you can keep your chonies, keep your bills, keep your heresies, cause I've had my feels. Hey, Phil. <laughs> of your gay friend. Jazz. You know, <laughs> after really looking at him, he's kind of cute. Oh, sorry, I'm not in a musical theater case. Well, fucking great!